This morning on CBS 2 News, the Boise City Council denied an appeal against a new homeless shelter. How soon Interfaith Sanctuary is set to start working on the project and what those behind the appeal say is next. Plus, Tyree Nichols set to be laid to rest today. A look ahead at the funeral and what's next. Plus, an attempted murder suspect dead in Oregon. The latest after a standoff with police overnight. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look of downtown Boise. It is Wednesday. We're kicking off February 1st, 2023. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And with a new month, hopefully comes a slight change in the mm -hmm. weather because it's been a cold week so far. Yeah, we're starting to warm up just a little bit now. We're going to jump out of the 20s and into the mid 30s today across the valley for our high temperatures. As for those temperatures right now, though, we're still sitting in the teens, but we are in the high teens and we'll jump into the 20s by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock today. So a little bit warmer than the last couple of days. We're not seeing those frigid conditions we've been seeing. Now, when you start off your day, you are going to see temperatures again in the teens will be at about 17 degrees at 6 a.m. We'll jump up to 19 degrees at 7 a.m., but we'll quickly drop back down to 17 degrees at 8 a.m. this morning. Now, right now, we are sitting at 17 degrees here in Boise. Over in Meridian, they're sitting at about 18 degrees this morning, and then over in Caldwell and Nampa, they're both sitting at 16 degrees right now. Up in Ontario, they're sitting at about 21 degrees and 16 degrees, also the temperature right now in Mountain Home. And then up in the mountains, negative 2 degrees in Sun Valley right now, and 10 degrees the temperature over in McCall. Now, we'll jump into the 20s by the end of the morning will be at around 24 degrees at 11 a.m. Then we'll break 30 degrees at 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 33 degrees here in Boise. We are going to see partly cloudy skies throughout the day. 33 to 34 degrees going to be that high in Boise. 34 over in Emmett and Nampa. 35 degrees going to be the high in Caldwell and 32 degrees going to be the high over in Mountain Home. And then up in the mountains 22 degrees in Sun Valley. 35 in Idaho City and 29 degrees going to be the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and taking a live look out there this Wednesday morning. As you can see on your screen, not too much happening. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. And as you can see, no delays to report. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, we begin this morning with Boise City Council denying the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association's appeal of the design approval for the proposed interfaith sanctuary shelter out on State Street. The Neighborhood Association says the different conditions given by the City Council to interfaith were not met. But the Boise City Council appears to disagree. Interfaith's project is now allowed to go forward and start the process within a matter of months. While the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association won't be able to make any more appeals here, they're still going forward with a lawsuit. And turning now to coverage at the Capitol, a bill that would implement Governor Brad Little's proposed expansion of the Idaho launch program, making it through the House Education Committee in a narrow vote, splitting Republicans, seven of them opposing the bill. The bill's sponsor says it's not a scholarship program, it's a workforce investment program. House Majority Leader Megan Blanksma emphasizes students seeking the most in-demand career will be priority than those who need the most help. The legislation now heads to the full House with a due pass recommendation. Also at the State House, a proposal that would consolidate school bond and levy election dates. Right now, school boards can have four elections a year to pass measures needed in local school districts in March, May, August, and November. This bill would cut it down to two to align with the primary and general election. The bill's sponsor says it will save and increase voter turnout. Right now, counties spend an average of $24,000. The committee sent the bill to print where it will now get a hearing in the House State Affairs Committee. Well, turning to developing news, family and friends of Tyree Nichols will gather in Memphis today where he will be laid to rest. Now, Nichols died just three weeks ago after being beaten to death by several police officers. Bradley Blackburn has the latest from New York. Vice President Kamala Harris will be among the thousands that are expected to attend the funeral of Tyree Nichols at the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis today. We're focused on celebrating Tyree's life. Um, we cannot and will not allow the way in which he died to define the totality of his life. Keep fighting for justice for our son 
and my family. Last night, Nichols' family and civil rights leaders issued a call to action at the Mason Temple Church, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his final speech. We are going to continue to fight this fight around police brutality and yes. killing yes. until we get federal laws changed. But on Capitol Hill, it's still unclear if the narrowly controlled Republican House and Democratic Senate can reach a deal on new legislation. You can count on us to introduce measures that will further accountability. We should have simple legislation that we can agree upon. Back in Memphis, the police department says it will release more audio and video of the violent Nichols arrest after its administrative investigation concludes in the coming weeks. The police department has now requested that the five ex-officers charged with second-degree murder in the incident also be decertified. Two other officers have been relieved of duty pending investigation, and three fire department employees were fired for not following policies and protocols. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. CBS News has learned another Memphis man preparing to file a suit against the Memphis Police Department and the city. He says those same five ex-Memphis police officers that charged Tyree Nichols in his earlier encounter, plus three others also beat and arrested him three days before Nichols. Again, that is unconfirmed. Police in Oregon say more information will be released at a press conference later today after a man accused of kidnapping and torturing a woman shot himself during an hours-long standoff with police overnight. The search for Benjamin Foster began January 24th after officers found a woman bound and severely beaten inside a Grants Pass home. Investigators eventually found him in the crawl space underneath that very house. Police announcing after the standoff that Foster was in custody, but they were seen taking him out of the house on a stretcher in critical condition. Officers then reported Foster died at the hospital as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The FBI and U.S. Marshals are now taking the lead on the investigation. And back here in Idaho, Boise police searching for these men you see on your screen, suspects in an armed robbery. It happened just before 1.30 yesterday afternoon on the 3500 block of West Rose Hill. Both are described as white men, one wearing a blue hoodie and gray sweatpants, the other a black hoodie and gray sweatpants. Police say they had on full masks and got away with some cash. If you live in the Latah, Casha, Rose Hill, and Roosevelt areas, check your security cameras, and if you see any footage of them, call police. Well, looking ahead, the stadium hosting this year's Super Bowl being prepped ahead of the big game. Workers at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, putting up banners and signs. On Sunday the 12th, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles compete for bragging rights and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Now Visit Phoenix says it will be the third Super Bowl played at this venue. I got a couple more weeks, but the big game coming up soon, I, actually just about nine days, I think now. So yeah, yeah. coming up in a little bit, but should be a fun day. Yeah, no, getting close, folks. And I know that at least that view from Arizona, they're seeing mm -hmm. some pretty warm temperatures, oh, yeah. Vasilia. Mm -hmm. We may see a, we were at least at a 180 mm -hmm. up here in the north. So tell us, do we have more snow heading our way? I know our snowpack is starting to kind of dwindle a little. Yeah, so we're going to see a rain snow mixture this weekend, but through Friday, we are going to see dry conditions here in the valley. There's a chance at some very light snow showers over in the mountains over the next couple of days, but that's not going to total over an inch of snowfall. So it's going to be very light snow up in the mountains. But as for here, we are going to see some dry conditions through Friday. We are going to see a gradual warm up this week as well. Temperatures already warming into the mid thirties today and we'll jump above average this weekend. Now we do have a chance of seeing some showers on Sunday. It will be a rain snow mixture here in the valley. We may see some snow up in the mountains. We are going to see some stagnant air at least for the next couple of days. We do have an air stagnation advisory that will be in effect from until Friday till about 1 p.m. And this spans throughout much of southwest Idaho and over in eastern Oregon as well. Now in parts of the upper Treasure Valley as well as parts of the western Magic Valley, we are going to see some winds that may block out some of that air stagnation over the next couple of days. But otherwise, we are going to see some stagnant air in some areas here in the Treasure or here in the uh, southwest Idaho. We are going to stay dry for the next couple of days as well. Now we are going to see some showers move in on Saturday night and that's going to last throughout 
throughout the day on Sunday, and then we could see some showers as well on Monday night and on Tuesday night, but those are expected to be widely scattered. Now, as for temperatures today, we'll jump to 22 degrees at 10 a.m. We're going to break 30 degrees around 1 p.m., leading to a high today of 34 degrees. That's going to come around 3 p.m., and we're going to see that high temperature till about 5 p.m. Now, temperatures will gradually increase. We're going to see a high of 38 degrees on Thursday. Temperatures will just jump a degree from Thursday to Friday, and we'll jump to 39 degrees on Friday. Then we're going to jump above average. Temperatures are going to jump about 4 degrees above average to 45 degrees on Saturday, and we're going to see temperatures level off in the mid 40s throughout the next couple of days after fr Saturday. Now we'll stay at 43 degrees on Sunday, and we'll see that temperature stick around on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Nice to see that 45 mm -hmm. up on the board. Yeah, a little bit warmer. Temperature is finally starting to gradually warm up as we're getting some more coastal air instead of that cold Arctic air we were receiving over the last couple of days. So a little bit of a warm up. Now we're going to jump above average on Saturday. Good to hear. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, you can see everything looking nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. And as you can see on your screen, traffic moving along freely. When you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, severe weather striking states across the U.S. this morning. We have a look at the damage. Plus a look at Idaho's snowpack. The data set to be released later today. And it's time for our question of the day. First, taking a look at yesterday's question. The average person does this for at least a half an hour a day. What is it? Choose some close answers. Now for today's question, a new poll finds that nearly 70% of owners say their pets enjoy doing this. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2 Adventure Weather is showing your local forecast across the Gem State. Over in Mountain Home, 31 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 15 degrees tonight and then tomorrow 38 degrees and mostly sunny skies expected over in Mount Mountain Home. Meanwhile, in Idaho City, 34 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 10 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 40 degrees and mostly sunny skies over in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. Well, a dangerous ice storm is crippling large parts of the country from Texas to Tennessee. The storm is blamed for at least two deaths so far due to slick road conditions. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more. Take a look. Across the south, roadways look like ice rinks. A dangerous layer of thick ice has officials begging drivers to stay home. Because of icing, many roads in Texas will remain very dangerous for the next 24 to 48 hours. In Texas, it snarled even slow moving traffic. In the Dallas Fort Worth area, 18 wheelers were frozen in place. In Austin, semis slammed into each other and injured a sheriff's deputy who was trying to help. The ice storm stretched across Arkansas and into Tennessee, where a 12 car pileup in Memphis sent at least five drivers to hospitals. Slow down. Don't don't take these uh, roads for granted because you go over the top. You don't know what's on the other side. It was no better in the air. More than half of all flights into and out of Dallas Fort Worth were canceled Tuesday. Southwest Airlines alone canceled more than 500 flights and delayed hundreds more. Now we're just trying to see if there's another airline that's uh, uh, going to fly out of here tonight. The storm dropped freezing rain and a little snow, but it was slick enough for sledding in North Texas. Maria Tiranova, originally from Russia, said she felt right at home. So every winter here in Texas, I am waiting for some snow. Yeah, and I'm with my kids and with my friends, so we go out and the slide. Across Texas, more than 2,000 trucks and other pieces of equipment are working to clear the roads and clean up an enormous mess. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. As of this morning, 25,000 customers in Texas are without power, but officials insist that's because of issues like accumulated ice on power lines and not widespread issues on the power grid. And officials in San Antonio, Texas, are trying out a new de-icer in this storm. A traditional coat of salt water tends to stick around after winter storms leave, and that can be bad for plants, animals, and people. But now a new ingredient may help. 
The mix is still mostly salt water, but now includes a juice that's left over when sugar is sucked out of sugar beets. It freezes at a lower temperature than the regular brine, and it's stickier too, meaning chat rock or gravel sprayed for traction will not easily bounce off the road. Well, we're still a ways out from warmer weather, but one new study coming up with ways to prepare for the heat. They say planting more trees may be able to help prevent heat-related deaths. According to a research model of 93 European cities, increasing tree cover they found up to 30 percent could lower the temperature by an average of about 0.4 degrees. Now, researchers say the lower temperature, that amount could prevent thousands of premature deaths. Well, a new report set to come out today looking at our snowpack. At Bogus Basin, water resource officials measuring the snowpack's water content. The water supply outlook last released on the first of the year showed the state snowpack well above normal, and that's good news for the water supply. CBS2 will let you know what the latest report says when we get it. Of course, that report not here yet, but we do have Vasily yeah. with a look at our weather today. Yeah, we aren't going to see any snowfall, at least for the next couple of days. The mountains may see some light snowfall periodically over the next couple of days, but here in the valley, we aren't going to see any snowfall. As temperatures continue to warm, we're going to warm up into the mid-40s by the end of this week. So some warmer weather ahead, but we are still seeing those chilly conditions this morning. We're saying in the teens. And that high-pressure system that was keeping us dry is starting to dwindle. And we're going to see a change in the jet stream that jet stream is going to shift and we're going to see a slow warming trend due to that jet stream pulling in some coastal air into the gem state. Now this is going to jump our temperatures back into the 40s this weekend and as for right now we are sitting in the mid 30s for our high temperature today. Now we are going to see partly cloudy skies today but th those cl partly cloudy skies are going to stick around tonight but then tomorrow morning we are going to see some clear skies. Tomorrow's sunrise should be beautiful here in the Treasure Valley as well as up in the mountains. The mountains aren't expecting any clouds at all. We may see some light clouds in the lower Treasure Valley in the morning. But then in the afternoon, we should see clear skies. And then tomorrow, we're gonna, or, and then on Friday, we are going to see some partly cloudy skies here in the valley. Now, tomorrow, Groundhog's Day, we're going to jump up to 38 degrees, 39 degrees, looking like the high on Friday. We're going to see mostly cloudy skies throughout the weekend as temperatures jump up to 45 degrees on Saturday. And then 43 degrees, looking like the high on Sunday and Monday. Now, on Saturday night and then into Sunday, we may see some precipitation move into the valley. That precipitation is expected to be a rain snow mix, but look for some more rain than snow as temperatures are expected to be above freezing throughout the day on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, we'll have a high of 44 degrees here in the valley. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, 30 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected today. We'll see 35 degrees as the high temperature on Thursday and Friday, and then we'll see mostly cloudy skies on Saturday with a high of 36 degrees. Temperatures will drop down to 34 degrees as we see some snow showers over in the mountains on Sunday, and temperatures are expected to stay in the mid 30s throughout Monday much of early next week. 35 degrees looking like the high on Monday and 34 degrees looking like the high on Tuesday. And as for those low temperatures, those low temperatures will be above average. We'll jump into the mid 20s as those low temperatures over in the mountains and here in the valley, we may see those lows jump into the low 30s. Excited to see those overnight lows climbing up. Mm -hmm. as yeah, well. everything creeping up a little bit. We are going to see temperatures jump above average by the end of this week. So a little bit warmer temperatures, but right now we're still dealing with that cold. Cold right now we're sitting in the high teens here in the valley this morning. Definitely want to bundle up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, as you can see, everything's still looking nice and calm. Not too much going on on your screen and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News this morning, COVID health emergencies are coming to an end. What's ending along with them that could impact you? Plus, a new variant of coronavirus discovered. Why health experts are keeping a close eye on it. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 523. Welcome back. The Biden administration announcing plans to end the COVID national and public health emergencies. It also means the end for some social benefits that help the nation cope with the pandemic, like 
free COVID tests and treatments. This is particularly concerning since COVID disproportionately hits those segments of the population that have the most difficulty accessing good medical care and preventive health services. Officials say many people will have to start paying for things they didn't need to before, like those COVID tests. However, most health insurance plans still pay for COVID vaccines. Officials recently announced that plan to start rolling out yearly vaccines similar to flu shots. Well, just as the health emergencies are being put to an end, the CDC says it is tracking a new potentially dangerous coronavirus variant. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what it's called and why it's risky. CH.1.1, it got its name from a variant tracker in Australia. Orthrus in Greek mythology was a two-headed cattle dog. Looks very unique. So does this new CH.1.1 now being tracked by the CDC. Here's what we need to know about it. As of this week, it's just under 2% of cases in the United States. It does come from Omicron, but the concern is that it has a mutation seen in Delta, and that was a potentially deadly and dangerous strain. We apologize for that technical difficulty. Well, eating ultra processed foods may be an, linked to an increased risk of developing and dying from cancer. Researchers in London found that for every 10% increase of ultra processed food in a person's diet, there was a 6% increased risk from dying from cancer with ovarian and breast cancer being the most common types. Coming up on CBS 2 News, getting ready for the Super Bowl, the preparation already underway ahead of the big game. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Of course, after all your favorites, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. All right, and don't forget about our question of the day, folks. That question is, a new poll finds nearly 70% of owners say their pets enjoy doing this. Let's talk, talk some guesses. Ashley, we both have pets. Vasily, I know one's on the way for you. Very yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, this one's definitely a tough one for me. 70% uh, is weird because, like, I know 100% of dogs like treats. So, obviously, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. this is going to be the answer. But, for, I mean, maybe they enjoy going to the dog park. That's my oh, yeah. the first guess off my list. I mean, some dogs don't because they don't like to socialize. Yeah. What do you guys think? That's, That's true. Guess. Mine has to go to the um, the quiet area uh, <laughs> because she's so scared of the larger dog. So if you're ever, yeah, at mm -hmm. Ann Morrison, come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you think, Ashley? I'm thinking maybe sleeping on the bed with their oh. owners. Ooh, I okay. totally I and I know to some dogs too like Lola. won't do that either they like their personal yes. space you know don't touch me while yes. I'm trying to go to sleep because I'll wake up but Lola has to be snuggled right up next to me which I'm not complaining <laughs> <laughs> no definitely have a little heater um I'm thinking maybe play in the snow oh okay that's a yeah great I know some guess. dogs don't like to play in the snow definitely exactly. my dog either because she doesn't like getting her paws all cold and everything exactly. yeah and also too it's just cold outside in general like you know when mm -hmm. it's like sunny outside and there's snow on the ground like she gets tricked like oh it's warm outside goes out there <laughs> immediately <laughs> comes back inside see or you, you know you have a husky who you can't get to come indoors exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah no I love it all right guys we'll read some of your guesses of course coming up next This morning on CBS 2 News, the Boise City Council denying an appeal against a new homeless shelter. How soon Interfaith Sanctuary is set to start working on the project and what those behind the appeal say is next. Plus, Tyree Nichols set to be laid to rest today. A look ahead at the funeral and what's next. Plus, an attempted murder suspect is dead in Oregon, the latest after a standoff with police overnight. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday morning. Now, we're going to see some chilly temperatures throughout the morning. We'll be at 17 degrees at 6 a.m. That'll drop up to 19 degrees around 7 o'clock before we drop back down to 17 degrees around 8 p or 8 a.m. Now, 17 degrees, also the temperature right now in Boise and Meridian. 10 degrees right now over in CUNA and 14 degrees the temperature right now in Nampa. 16 degrees looking like the temperature right now in Caldwell and 14 degrees the temperature over in Mountain Home. And then it's a little bit 
bit warmer this morning over in Ontario. They're sitting in the 20s right now, 21 degrees the temperature there. Then up in the mountains, a very chilly start, 1 degree in Sun Valley and 10 degrees the temperature right now in McCall. Now we'll see chillier temperatures at 9 a.m., but we will see a warm up, 24 degrees expected at 11 o'clock, and we'll break 30 degrees at 1 p.m., leading to our high today of 34 degrees. That's going to come at 3 p.m. and will last till about 5 or 6 p.m. today. Now at four high temperatures across the valley, we're going to see 34 also in Emmett and in Nampa. 35 degrees looking like the high in Caldwell and 31 degrees going to be the high over in Ontario. 32 degrees going to be the high over in Mountain Home and then up in the mountains, 22 degrees in Sun Valley, 35 degrees in Idaho City and 29 degrees going to be the high in McCall today. Now tonight, we're still going to see temperatures in the teens. Our low tonight is going to be 15 degrees and we'll see mostly clear skies tonight and then tomorrow we're going to see mostly sunny skies here in the valley. We're expecting little to no clouds throughout the valley and here in Boise we're going to have a high of 38 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, as you can see on your screen, everything looking nice and calm. Traffic running smoothly and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, we begin this morning with Boise City Council denying the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association's appeal of the design review approval for the proposed interfaith sanctuary shelter out on State Street. Now, the Neighborhood Association says the different conditions given by City Council to interfaith were not met. But the City Council appears to disagree with that. Interfaith project now allowed to go forward and start the process within a matter of months. While the Veteran Park Neighborhood Association won't be able to make any more appeals here, they are still going forward with a lawsuit. And taking a look at coverage at the Capitol, a bill that would implement Governor Brad Little's proposed expansion of the Idaho Launch Program, making it through the House Education Committee in a narrow vote, splitting Republicans. Seven of them opposing the bill. The bill's sponsor says it's not a scholarship program, it's a workforce investment program. House Majority Leader Megan Blanksma emphasizes students seeking the most in-demand career will be priority than those who need the most help. The legislation now heads to the full House with a due pass recommendation. And also at the State House, a proposal that would consolidate school bond and levy election dates. Right now, school boards can have four elections a year to pass measures needed in local school districts. Those are in March, May, August, and November. This bill would cut it down to two to align with the primary and general elections. The bill's sponsor says it will save money and increase voter turnout. Right now, counties spend an average of $24,000. The committee sent the bill to print, where it will now get a hearing in the House State Affairs Committee. And turning to developing news this morning, the funeral for Tyree Nichols will be held today at the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis. The Reverend Jay Lawrence will preside over the service, and the Reverend Al Sharpton, pardon me, Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. The family says they hope Nichols' death will not be in vain. They're calling for local and national police reforms. The Shelby County District Attorney's Office says investigation. The investigation is not over, and it's looking at all individuals involved the night Nichols was beaten. And Vice President Kamala Harris is set to attend the funeral today. She spoke with Nichols' family over the phone yesterday. Atlanta's former mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, and current senior advisor to the president for public engagement will also be there. Family members of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor are also expected to attend. And in Oregon, the search for a suspect in an attempted murder case ended overnight. Benjamin Foster died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound after an hours-long standoff with police in Grants Pass. The search for Foster started on January 24th after officers found a woman who had been bound and severely beaten into unconsciousness. Tyler Meyerly from our Sinclair sister station has the latest and what's next. An hours long standoff finally ending just before 8 p.m. Tuesday night. Grants Pass Police confirming the search for Benjamin Foster is over. One week after officers responded to a woman being bound and beaten in her own home, the suspect returning to the scene. Earlier today, the Grants Pass Police Department received credible information that the suspect, Benjam Benjamin Foster, had been seen uh, near the victim's residence um, and that he had been seen entering into that residence. 
For some time, investigators weren't sure if Foster was actually in the home. But after hours of attempts to contact Foster, negotiators were able to locate him in the crawl space underneath the house. Then finally, officials announcing Benjamin Foster was in custody. But at the time, they removed him from the house on a stretcher in critical condition, according to officials. Foster died at the hospital as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. More details expected during a press conference Wednesday with all agencies involved in the week-long manhunt finally coming to an end right where it all started. In Grants Pass, I'm Tyler Meyerly. And back here in Idaho, Boise police looking for these men who are suspects in an armed robbery. It happened just before 1.30 yesterday afternoon on the 3500 block of West Rose Hill. Both are described as white men, one wearing a blue hoodie and gray sweatpants, the other a black hoodie and gray sweatpants. Police say they had on full masks and got away with some cash. If you live in the Lataw, Casha, Rose Hill and Roosevelt areas, check your security cameras and if you have any footage of them, Call police. Well, looking ahead, the stadium hosting this year's Super Bowl being prepped ahead of the big game. Workers at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, putting up banners and signs. Now on Sunday, this 12th, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles competing for bragging rights and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Now Visit Phoenix says it will be the third Super Bowl played at this venue. Well, I'm going to be jealous of anyone that has Super Bowl tickets, not only because they're going to the big game, but also because they get to experience those warm temperatures over in Arizona, much different yeah. from us. Oh, definitely very <laughs> different. And I know that yesterday we did have that wind chill of about 10 degrees. Are we looking at another wind chill factor today? Uh, not too much wind in the forecast today. We may see some light winds in the upper Treasure Valley, but the lower Treasure Valley, they shouldn't see too much wind at all today. So that's not going to drive that wind chill too far down as much as yesterday. Now we are going to see warmer temperatures than we did yesterday as well as we see a gradual warm up this week. We're getting some more coastal air moving into a re the region as that high pressure system off the coast begins to weaken a bit. Now it's still going to keep us dry through Friday. We may see some possible showers on Sunday and that could begin late on Saturday night and most of Sunday we are going to see some potential rain snow mixtures. We'll see mostly rain here in the valley, but there is a chance of some snow up in the mountains. And we're also going to see some stagnant air, at least for the next couple of days. We have an air stagnation advisory that covers much of southwestern Idaho and parts of eastern Oregon. Now this is going to last until about 1 p.m. on Friday. We could see some stagnant air continue on throughout the next couple of days. But here in the upper Treasure Valley and the western Magic Valley, we are going to see some heavier winds that could break up any inversion that's set to form. Now we we are going to see dry conditions at least through Saturday during the day, but Saturday night and then throughout the day on Sunday, we'll see some scattered showers here in the valley. Again, it's most likely to be rain as temperatures will be above freezing, but we could see some snow at higher elevations. 25 degrees going to be the temperature at 11 o'clock. We're going to see partly cloudy skies throughout the day today and we'll break 30 degrees around 1 p.m., leading to our high today of 34 degrees. That's going to come at 3 p.m. Now we'll see a four degree increase in temperatures tomorrow to 38 degrees. Then we'll jump to 39 degrees on Friday before jumping above average on Saturday. 45 degrees looking like the high on Saturday and temperatures will stay in the mid 40s. We're going to see a high of 43 degrees on Sunday and that 43 degree, 43 degree high will stick around on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Well, it makes these cold mornings a mm -hmm. little easier knowing that a warm up is on the way. Yeah, warm up ahead. We are going to see that coastal air move in and that's going to warm us up at least over the next couple of days. So hopefully next week we don't see a decrease in temperature and <laughs> that roller coaster kind of stays on the <laughs> upward trajectory and we'll see some warmer temperatures hopefully. Yeah, we can only hope. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Haley. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there this morning, as you can see, as we're starting to gradually see a few more cars out there, everything's still looking nice and calm. Traffic moving smoothly and not hearing of anything that should slow you down this morning. So when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. And today's number of the day focuses on gender identity in schools. A Scott Rasmussen National Survey found 67% of voters say a high school student who is born a boy but identifies a girl should be required to use the men's restroom. 27% think the student should be allowed to choose the restroom to use, while 6% believe that person should be required to use the woman's restroom. 
The survey also found that 57% of voters under the age of 35 said the student should be required to use the men's restroom. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. The question is, a new poll finds nearly 70% of owners say their pets enjoy doing this. Well, I'm going to go with my answer from before, and I'm going to say going to the dog park. What were your guys' guesses again? I like that answer. I know. I like that answer, too. Ah, 70% enjoy doing this. What did I say earlier, Ashley? See, this is why we need coffee, guys. Uh, playing in the snow? Yeah, playing, playing in the, in the snow. snow. And then what was yours, Ashley? Um, I'm going to... I'm going to go with sleeping in the bed with... Mm -hmm. That's yep. a great guess. Yeah. A little snuggle pup. All right, let's see what folks at home have to say. Justin oh. says listening to music. Oh. Dog jamming out. You know, yeah. that's always fun. I love the idea of that. Okay, <laughs> let's see what else folks have to say. Doug, going for a ride in the car. Oh, Ooh. that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Some... You know, Lola used to not it. like it. Some dogs mm -hmm. hate it. Yeah, Lola used to not like it at all, and now she, she'll she jump right, <laughs> right, right in the car. <laughs> all right, Joe says, following them to the bathroom. Oh, I have to do that oh with my, my dog back home. Yes. She will not stay outside. She feels yeah. the cold. We'll be right back up at the door. You're like, no, keep going yep. down. They just like to maintain eye contact at all times. <laughs> You're like, get out of here. All right, that's a great one, Joe. If you think you know the answer, you can still get your guesses in by going to our Facebook page page or our Twitter. Of course, we'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, cutting down on cost as egg prices soar. Some tips if you're thinking about grabbing some chickens. CBS2 Adventure Weather is showing your local forecast across the Gem State. Over in Caldwell, 35 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 15 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 36 degrees and mostly sunny skies over in Caldwell. Meanwhile in Jerome, 28 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 14 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 32 degrees and mostly sunny skies over in Jerome. Thank you, Vasily. Well, today President Biden has his first White House meeting with the new Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. One of the most pressing items on the agenda is raising the country's debt limit. McCarthy says he wants a reasonable agreement that includes spending cuts. The White House is pushing for more specifics from the California Republican. After the country hit the limit earlier last month, the U.S. Treasury announced it was taking extraordinary measures to avoid default. That bought some time and gives Congress until June to act. And layoffs in the tech sector continue. This time, PayPal says it will cut around 7% of its workforce, which is roughly 2,000 employees, over the next several weeks. The digital company cites the challenging macroeconomic environment for its decision. PayPal is the parent company of payment apps, Venmo and Zoom, among others. Well, as egg prices are rising due to inflation and bird flu outbreaks, more people are considering to getting chickens to help cut the cost. Now, Cassidy Williams is sharing some things you need to keep in mind if you're considering getting yourself a little feathered friend. It seems every trip to the grocery store for Sue Dottie comes with a surprise. What will a dozen eggs cost? I paid $4.99 for a dozen eggs, and a week ago, maybe 10 days ago, I spent $6.29 at ShopRite. So what about the all-organic option? This is a Buff Orpington um, rooster. Joshua Beebe is the owner of Tardiff Poultry Farm in Coventry. He says he's already sold thousands of chickens this year as people look to make their own eggs. And I think people are just trying to get back to local and they think eggs and local chickens is a good way to do it. Beebe says the costs will vary depending on what you're looking for, but it's worth it to invest in supplies that will last a few years. Let's do the math. If you want two dozen eggs a week, you'll need at least four egg laying hens. They cost about $20 each. Then you need a coop. On average, that'll cost around $200. A waterer and feeder, about $50. The upfront cost then is $330. Two dozen eggs at the grocery store will cost you about $10. You'll spend around 50 cents a week in feed, meaning you save $9.50 a week by having your own chickens. Using those numbers, it'll take you about 35 weeks to recoup your investment. Chicks will cost you less, but then you also need to buy heat lamps and other supplies. <coughs> and it's not just the money you need to think about. You want to make sure you're educated. You want to make sure you know 
um, what you want the bird for, um, what the outcome is, make the commitment, just like if you're getting a dog, getting any, it's an animal you have to take care of. I'm it's not for everyone, Dottie included. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, tonight could be the night somebody wins $653 million. The cash value worth about half, or pardon me, $350.5 million. Don't want to leave anything out. According to Powerball, if a player wins the jackpot, it would be the eighth largest grand prize won in Powerball history. The last Powerball jackpot was November 19th when a ticket holder in Kansas won the grand prize. It was worth $92.9 million. Since then, they've had 31 consecutive drawings without a jackpot winner. Yep. Holding out hope that it's someone in the gem state. Yep. The yeah. West Coast needs a win. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and we also obviously need a win for weather. I know that our snowpack, um, though that data isn't coming out till mm -hmm. later today, we are seeing our panhandle start to dwindle when it yeah. comes to that. Yeah, they were one of the only areas where it wasn't above average. And so their, their snowpack is dwindling a little bit. Hopefully they can get some no, more snowfall in the coming months. But as for the next couple of days, we're not going to see any snow here in the gem state. We are continuing to see dry conditions due to a high pressure system off the coast, but that high pressure system is starting to dwindle and we're going to see a change in the jet stream over the coming days. This change in the jet stream is going to pull some more coastal air into the region and the gem state will be slowly warming up over the next couple of days. We're going to see temperatures back in the 40s by this weekend and we'll be jumping above average once again. Now we are going to see partly cloudy skies today. Those partly cloudy skies will stick around into the evening, but then by tomorrow morning we are going to see some clear skies. It should make for a beautiful sunrise tomorrow. We're going to see some clear skies here in the Treasure Valley, and we'll see clear skies over in the mountains tomorrow as well, and then expect some more clouds to move into the region on Friday. Now, as for the extended forecast, we'll jump to 38 degrees on Groundhog's Day tomorrow. We're going to see those mostly sunny skies, and then we'll see the clouds return, and we'll see mostly cloudy skies over the weekend as temperatures slowly jump above average. We'll stay below average on Friday with a high of 39 degrees, but then we'll jump to 45 degrees on Saturday and expect temperatures to stay in the mid-40s early next week. Now we'll see that rain snow mixture on Sunday, but expect mostly rain here in the valley with a chance of some snow up at higher elevations. We'll have a high of 43 degrees on Sunday, 43 degrees on Monday and 44 degrees on Tuesday in the or in the Treasure Valley. Meanwhile, in the mountains, 30 degrees to high today. Temperatures will jump up to 35 degrees on Thursday and Friday and 36 degrees going to be the high on Saturday. We'll see some snow showers over in the mountains on Sunday with a high of 34 degrees. Temperatures expected to level out into the mid 30s early next week. Week. Monday going to be a high of 35 degrees in the mountains and Tuesday they'll have a high of 34 degrees there. And tomorrow we find out if we'll be seeing a little bit more winter mm -hmm. or if an We'll have an early spring. Yeah, the long awaited announcement yeah. comes tomorrow. Hoping for that spring so we can <laughs> see these warmer temperatures stick around. And yeah. We don't see that roller coaster start to decline like we've seen last week where temperatures drop very, very low. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there, starting to see some more folks out on the road starting their day. But as you can see on your screen, everything moving along smoothly. Not hearing of anything that should slow you down on your morning commute this Wednesday morning. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News, monkeys are back at the Dallas Zoo after disappearing earlier this week. Why the latest escape is just part of a troubling trend. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 554. Welcome back. Two missing monkeys back at the Dallas Zoo this morning. Now they disappeared earlier this week and Janet Shamalian explains this is following a string of mysterious and troubling incidents at the zoo. Tonight, two missing monkeys have been returned to the Dallas Zoo. Zoo officials in a now deleted tweet saying they were thrilled and the pair is being evaluated. Police acting on a tip were led to an abandoned home about a half hour south of the zoo. They reportedly found the monkeys in a closet. Earlier in the day, Dallas police said they were looking for this man in connection with the disappearance of the monkeys. The photo and this video of the same man wandering the zoo grounds were taken Sunday before the Emperor Tamarin monkeys were reported missing Monday. There are several markets for this type of monkey. Some is just for people who want to keep them as pets and the other one is people who want to breed them. 
It's the fourth bizarre incident at the zoo in the last month, and it comes after additional cameras and security were put in place. Earlier this month, a clouded leopard escaped. The fencing around its habitat had been cut. The animal was found nearby the same day. The zoo's enclosure of the Langer monkeys was also discovered cut, but none escaped. On January 21st, an endangered lappet-faced vulture was found dead. The bird reportedly had an unusual injury. A cause of death is pending. Janet Shamley in CBS News, Houston. Well, the Dallas Zoo is not the only one dealing with missing animals. A dozen monkeys were stolen from the Louisiana Zoo over the weekend. Shocking staff. It's a very sad situation. Uh, obviously, we're heartbroken. We don't have a lot of details at this time. It is an ongoing investigation. Now, Matt Oldenburg, the director of Zoo Sienna, says they're recognized for breeding squirrel monkeys, a species currently struggling with habitat loss. Right now, they don't have any leads on who may have taken them. Well, back here in Idaho, you can see monkeys and much more for just $3 starting tomorrow. Zoo Boise is starting $3 Thursdays. It will run throughout the month. The zoo is open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for the Super Bowl, the preparation underway ahead of the big game. Plus, severe weather striking states across the U.S. this morning. We give you a look at the damage. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Boise City Council denying an appeal against a new homeless shelter. How soon Interfaith Sanctuary is set to start working on the project and what those behind the appeal say is next. Plus, Tyree Nichols to be laid to rest today. A look ahead at the funeral and what's next. Plus, an attempted murder suspect is dead in Oregon, the latest after a standoff with police overnight. Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is CBS 2 News this morning, a live look for you of downtown Boise. It is Wednesday. We're kicking off February 1st, 2023. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And tomorrow we have Groundhog's Day. Mm -hmm. Hope we all know Sarah is hoping <laughs> that spring. Vasily, what are you hoping for? Yeah, I'm hoping for some spring weather too. Right now we're seeing a warm up in temperatures. So we may reach some spring temperatures by the end of this week, but we'll be in the mid forties. But as for right now, we're seeing temperatures in the teens this morning. We will continue to jump into the twenties later on this week. But as for right now, we are gonna see temperatures in the teens this morning, 17 degrees expected right, or the temperature right now. We'll jump up to 19 degrees around 7 a.m. before we drop back down to 17 degrees at 8 a.m. And as I said, right now we're sitting at 17 degrees here in Boise and in Meridian. 14 degrees the temperature right now in Nampa and 15 degrees the temperature over in Caldwell. A little bit chillier down in CUNA. They're sitting at about 10 degrees this morning. 19 degrees the temperature over in Ontario and 14 degrees the temperature right now in Mountain Home. And then up in the mountains, a very chilly start. 1 degree in Sun Valley and 12 degrees the temperature right now in McCall. Now we'll see 20 degree temperatures starting at around 10 or 11 o'clock. We'll see temperatures at 24 degrees at 11. That'll jump up to 30 degrees around 1 p.m., leading to our high today in Boise of 34 degrees. 34 degrees also going to be the high over in Emmett and Nampa, and 32 degrees going to be the high in Mountain Home. 35 expected over in Caldwell, and 31 degrees going to be the high in Ontario. And then up in the mountains, 22 degrees in Sun Valley, 35 in Idaho City, and 29 degrees going to be the high in McCall today. Now, overnight tonight, we'll drop to 15 degrees, and then tomorrow in Boise, we'll see mostly sunny skies with a high of 38 degrees. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we start the 6 o'clock hour of your Wednesday morning, as you can see, gradually starting to see some more cars out on the road, but traffic moving along freely. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down on your Wednesday morning commute. 
So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we begin this morning with Boise City Council denying the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association's appeal of the design approval for the proposed interfaith sanctuary shelter on State Street. The Neighborhood Association says the different conditions given by the city to interfaith were not met. But the City Council appears to disagree. Interfaith's project now allowed to go forward and start the process within a matter of months. While the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association won't be able to make any more appeals here, they are still going forward with a lawsuit. And taking a look at our coverage at the Capitol, a bill that would implement Governor Brad Little's proposed expansion of the Idaho launch program, making it through the House Education Committee in a narrow vote, splitting Republicans, seven of them opposing the bill. The bill's sponsor says it's not a scholarship program, it's a workforce investment program. House Majority Leader Megan Blanksma emphasizes students seeking the most in-demand career will be priority, then those who need the most help. The legislation now heads to the full House with a due pass recommendation. Also at the State House, a proposal that would consolidate school bond and levy election dates. Right now, school boards can have four elections a year to pass measures needed in local school districts. Those are in March, May, August, and November. This bill would cut it down to two to align with the primary and general elections. The bill's sponsor says it will save money and increase voter turnout. Right now, counties spend an average of $24,000. The committee sent the bill to print, where it will now get a hearing in the House State Affairs Committee. Well, turning to developing news this morning, family and friends of Tyree Nichols will gather in Memphis today, where he'll be laid to rest. Nichols died three weeks ago, just days after being beaten by several police officers. Bradley Blackburn has the latest from New York. Vice President Kamala Harris will be among the thousands that are expected to attend the funeral of Tyree Nichols at the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis today. We're focused on celebrating Tyree's life. Um, we cannot and will not allow the way in which he died to define the totality of his life. Keep fighting for justice for our son and my family. Last night, Nichols' family and civil rights leaders issued a call to action at the Mason Temple Church, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his final speech. We are going to continue to fight this fight around police brutality and yes. killing yes. until we get federal laws changed. But on Capitol Hill, it's still unclear if the narrowly controlled Republican House and Democratic Senate can reach a deal on new legislation. You can count on us to introduce measures that will further accountability. We should have simple legislation that we can agree upon. Back in Memphis, the police department says it will release more audio and video of the violent Nichols arrest after its administrative investigation concludes in the coming weeks. The police department has now requested that the five ex-officers charged with second-degree murder in the incident also be decertified. Two other officers have been relieved of duty pending investigation, and three fire department employees were fired for not following policies and protocols. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Well, CBS News has learned another Memphis man is preparing to file a suit against the Memphis Police Department and the city. He claims the same five ex-Memphis police officers charged in the Tyree Nickel encounter, plus three others, also beat and arrested him just three days before Nichols. Well, police in Oregon say more information will be released at a press conference later today after a man accused of kidnapping and torturing a woman shot himself during an hours-long standoff with police overnight. The search for Benjamin Foster began January 24th after officers found a woman bound and severely beaten inside a Grants Pass home. Investigators eventually found him in the crawl space underneath that very house. Police announcing after the standoff that Foster was in custody but they were seen taking him out of the house on a stretcher in critical condition. Officials then reported Foster died at the hospital as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The FBI and U.S. Marshals are now taking the lead on the investigation. And back here in Idaho, Boise police looking for these men that you see on your screen, suspects in an armed robbery. It happened just before 1.30 yesterday afternoon on the 3500 block of West Rose Hill. Both are described as white men, one wearing a blue hoodie and gray sweatpants, the other a black hoodie and gray sweatpants. Police say they had on full masks and they got away with some cash. 
If you live in the Lata, Casha, Rose Hill, and Roosevelt areas, check your security cameras, and if you see any footage of them, call police. Well, the stadium hosting this year's Super Bowl is being prepped ahead of the big game. Workers are at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, putting up banners and signs for the big day. On Sunday the 12th, the Kansas City Chiefs and Philadelphia Eagles will compete for bragging rights and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Yeah, Visit Phoenix says this will be the third Super Bowl played at this venue. Mm. Yeah, some exciting stuff coming yeah. up quick. Coming up yeah. quick for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, is anybody rooting for anybody in particular? You guys Ooh, got your I team? I mean, like, there's no team. I'm a Seahawks fan, born and raised B in Seattle. Sense. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. neither of those teams really interest me, but I'll definitely be watching the big game. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm, yeah. A, I'm a Steelers fan, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. No, that's okay, guys. We can still appreciate the Super Bowl, uh -huh. even if we're not big fans. I was going to say, we have a coworker that's a huge Chiefs fan, oh, so we yeah. know yes. we'll at least have one person mm -hmm. rooting for them. <laughs> and as far as the weather, though, Vasily, mm -hmm. I know we have Groundhog's Day coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we want Puxatawney Phil to see his shadow. Mm -hmm. We have sunshine expected. Yeah. But I know our inversion's building. Mm -hmm. So what exactly, do we have any idea of what that's going to look like? Yeah, so we are going to see some stagnant air across southwest Idaho in the upper Treasure Valley, as well as parts of the western Magic Valley. We could see some more winds that may break up that inversion, but otherwise we are going to see inversion, especially in parts of the lower Treasure Valley. Now we're going to see a gradual warm up this week in temperatures as some more coastal air moves into the region. We'll see dry conditions through Friday, but we do have a chance of some possible showers on Sunday, and that could begin late on Saturday night. Now again, we are going to see some stagnant air this week. This air stagnation advisory is expected to impact much of southwest Idaho and parts of eastern Oregon. Now again in the upper Treasure Valley as well as parts of the western Magic Valley we are going to see some winds pick up over the next couple of days. That may break up some inversion there but we are definitely going to see some inversion in parts of the lower Treasure Valley and parts of the mountain valleys. Now we are going to stay dry through the next couple of days but then on Saturday night and then we may see some showers throughout the day on Sunday, Monday night and Tuesday night. We could see some scattered showers here in the valley. Most of those storms are expected to impact the mountains. Now 25 degrees expected to be the temperature at 11 o'clock. We'll jump to 28 degrees by noon and we'll break 30 degrees around 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 34 degrees. That's going to come at 3 p.m. Now we'll see a four degree increase in temperatures from today to tomorrow and we'll see a high of 38 degrees tomorrow. Temperatures will jump one degree to 39 degrees on Friday before we jump above average on Saturday. We'll see a high of 45 degrees on Saturday before temperatures drop to 43 degrees on Sunday. We'll see another 43 degree high on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Excited to see that gradual warm up heading mm -hmm. our way. Yeah, gradual warm up going in the works right now. We're going to see that coastal air move in. That is going to jump those temperatures up above average. So hopefully they stay there. We'll see next week if they'll drop back down like we saw last week. But the, we'll see as the days go by. Definitely. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Wednesday morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for a look at our driving conditions this morning. Everything quiet, uh, moving along great. Started off, it's a dry pavement, of course, this morning again, uh, just very cold out. And uh, traffic volumes this time of the morning. Overall on the light side, occasionally there can be a little crowded spot near merge areas in Meridian this time of the morning, but that just comes and goes. Nothing major to get in the way. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, severe weather striking states across the U.S. We have a look at the damage. Plus, a look at Idaho's snowpack. The data set to be released later today. And it's time for our question of the day. First, taking a look at yesterday's question. The average person does this for at least a half hour a day. What is it? The answer, choose. Kind of makes your jaw hurt when you think about it. Now for today's question, a new poll finds that nearly 70% of owners, pet owners, say their pets enjoy doing this. All right, folks, thinking caps on. What is it?
CBS2 Adventure Weather showing your local forecast across the Gem State over in Ontario. 31 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 19 degrees overnight and then tomorrow 34 degrees and mostly sunny skies looking like the high over in Ontario. Meanwhile in Cascade, 30 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 7 degrees overnight and tomorrow mostly sunny skies with a high of 35 degrees over in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. Well, a dangerous ice storm is crippling large parts of the country from Texas to Tennessee. The storm is blamed for at least two deaths so far due to slick road conditions. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more. Take a look. Across the south, roadways look like ice rinks. A dangerous layer of thick ice has officials begging drivers to stay home. Because of icing, Many roads in Texas will remain very dangerous for the next 24 to 48 hours. In Texas, it snarled even slow moving traffic. In the Dallas Fort Worth area, 18 wheelers were frozen in place. In Austin, semis slammed into each other and injured a sheriff's deputy who was trying to help. The ice storm stretched across Arkansas and into Tennessee, where a 12 car pileup in Memphis sent at least five drivers to hospitals. Slow down. Don't don't take these uh, roads for granted because you go over the top. You don't know what's on the other side. It was no better in the air. More than half of all flights into and out of Dallas Fort Worth were canceled Tuesday. Southwest Airlines alone canceled more than 500 flights and delayed hundreds more. Now we're just trying to see if there's another airline that's uh, uh, going to fly out of here tonight. The storm dropped freezing rain and a little snow, but it was slick enough for sledding in North Texas. Maria Tiranova, originally from Russia, said she felt right at home. So every winter here in Texas, I was waiting for some snow. Yeah, and I'm with my kids and with my friends, so we go out and the slide. Across Texas, more than 2,000 trucks and other pieces of equipment are working to clear the roads and clean up an enormous mess. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. As of this morning, 25,000 customers in Texas were without power, but officials insist that's because of issues like accumulated ice on power lines and not widespread issues with the power grid. And officials in San Antonio, Texas, are trying out a new de-icer in the storm. A traditional coat of salt water tends to stick around after winter storms leave, and that can be bad for plants, animals, and people. But now, a new ingredient may help. The mix is still mostly salt water, but now includes a juice that's left over when sugar is sucked out of sugar beets. It freezes at a lower temperature than the regular brine, and it's stickier too, meaning chat rock or gravel sprayed for traction won't easily bounce off the road. Well, we're still a ways out from warmer weather, but one new study coming up with ways to prepare for the heat. They say planting more trees may be able to help prevent heat-related deaths. According to a research model of 93 European cities, increasing tree cover up to 30 percent could lower the temperature by an average of 0.4 degrees. Researchers say lowering the temperature that amount could prevent thousands of premature deaths. Well, a new report set to come out today, taking a look at our snowpack. At Bogus Basin, water resource officials measuring the snowpack's water content the water supply outlook last released on the first of the year showed that the state snowpack is well above normal. That's good news for the water supply. CBS2 will let you know what the latest report says when we get it. All right, hoping for some good news. And Vasily, mm -hmm. the good news that we have at least have today is that we are warming slowly mm -hmm. but surely. Yeah, we're not seeing high temperatures in the 20s today. We're going to jump into the mid-30s today. And by the end of this week, we're going to see temperatures in the 40s. So a little bit of a warm-up in store for us here in the valley and for our friends over in the mountains. So we are seeing those warmer temperatures, and we're going to stay dry for at least the next couple of days. We do still see that high-pressure system off the coast, but it is starting to weaken, and we're going to see that jet stream shift over the next couple of days. We're going to see a slow warming trend here in the valley and for most of the mountains as well. We'll see temperatures jump into the 30s in the mountains and here in the valley will jump into the 40s by this weekend. So a little bit of a warm up in store and we are going to stay dry again through Friday. As for today, we're going to see those partly cloudy skies and we'll see those partly cloudy skies into the evening. But by tomorrow morning, we'll see some clear skies and those clear skies are expected to stick around throughout the day on Thursday should make for a beautiful day as temperatures are expected to jump 
into the high 30s tomorrow, and then we'll see temperatures again in the 40s by this weekend. Tomorrow's high expected to be 38 degrees. Lows will also jump into the 20s and even the 30s by the end of this week. 39 degrees is going to be the high on Friday, and then we'll jump above average on Saturday. We'll see mostly cloudy skies with a high of 45 degrees on Saturday. Saturday night, we may see some precipitation moving into the region, but most of it is expected on Sunday. We will see a rain snow mixture with mostly rain here in the valley, and then on Monday, we'll see a high of 43 degrees, 44 looking like the high on Thursday in the valley. Meanwhile, in the mountains, 30 degrees today. Temperatures will jump up to 35 degrees tomorrow and on Friday, and then 36 degrees looking like the high on Saturday. They'll see some snow showers throughout the day on Sunday in the mountains with a high of 34 degrees, 35 looking like the high on Monday, and 34 degrees going to be the high on Tuesday in the mountains. Nice to see an increase in temperatures, but I guess tomorrow we'll find out mm -hmm. if those are here to stay or if we may dip back down. Yeah, hopefully he sees a shadow <laughs> and we'll get some spring weather coming up soon, but yeah. maybe he won't and those that winter weather may continue. We'll see. Yeah, we're all anxiously waiting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how our traffic conditions are looking. Doing just great with the drive in general. 84 east and west of Boise, uh, occasionally a little slowing will pop up briefly on uh, 84 and Meridian. Now and then is about it. All in all, very good start and on freeway routes. Closure, too, to keep in mind, like uh, Franklin Boulevard in Nampa between Cherry Lane and Eustick. That just started Monday. And early last week, they shut down Franklin Road east of the uh, Cheese Factory in Nampa. That's between Star Road and McDermott. That closure on Franklin Road associated with that Highway 16 work going on between Meridian and Nampa, uh, north and south of the freeway. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, COVID health emergencies are coming to an end. What's ending along with them that could impact you? Plus, a new variant of coronavirus discovered my health experts are keeping a close eye. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 624. Welcome back. The Biden administration announcing plans to end the COVID national and public health emergencies. Now, this also means the end for some social benefits that help the nation cope with the pandemic, like free COVID tests and treatments. This is particularly concerning since COVID disproportionately hits those segments of the population that have the most difficulty accessing good medical care and preventive health services. Officials say many people will have to start paying for things they didn't need to before, like COVID tests. However, most health insurance plans should still pay for COVID vaccines. Officials recently announced they plan to start rolling out yearly vaccines similar to flu shots. Well, just as the health emergencies are being put to an end, the CDC says it is tracking a new potentially dangerous coronavirus variant. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what it's called and why it's risky. CH.1.1, it got its name from a variant tracker in Australia. Orthrus in Greek mythology was a two headed cattle dog. Looks very unique. So does this new CH.1.1 now being tracked by the CDC. Here's what we need to know about it. As of this week, it's just under 2% of cases in the United States. It does come from Omicron, but the concern is that it has a mutation seen in Delta, and that was a potentially deadly and dangerous strain. Coming up on CBS 2 News, getting ready for the Super Bowl, the preparation already underway ahead of the big game. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 at 7 o'clock. We have The Price is Right at 8 o'clock, Lingo, at 9 o'clock, Tough as Nails. And then you can join Brent Huntsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is, a new poll finds nearly 70% of owners say their pets enjoy doing this. So our director, Rich, actually made us clear about it. It's not only so dogs, first. it <laughs> says pets up there. So it really could be anything, and that actually takes my guess out of the way. My guess was a dog park, and I'm guessing cats <laughs> don't love the dog park. Yeah, no, so, maybe not the best. 
I'm, I don't know. I like that listening to music guests from the first hour. I think yeah. that might be a great guest. So I might tag along with that one. What do you guys think? I like that. Yes. Pets, folks. Again, <laughs> uh, yeah, we were a little dog crazy <laughs> yeah. here in this studio. Uh, definitely not guessing the snow because, again, cats in the snow. That's mm -hmm. a no. Oh, that rhymed a little. Oh, nice. um, okay, let's think. Uh, they enjoy, I don't know, snuggling. Oh, that's a great guess. I, I mean, I feel like all pets. Yeah. Some. I, don't know. I think I'm going to stick with um, sleep in the bed. You know, okay. yep. cats may like to, you never know. Uh, pe pet parrots may like to <laughs> sleep know in the bed. Yeah. You <laughs> never know, though. Whether it's a parrot, a ferret, <laughs> or a dog. All right. Well, we'll read some of your guesses, of course, coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Boise City Council denying an appeal against a new homeless shelter. How soon Interfaith Sanctuary is set to start working on their project and what those behind the appeal say is next. Lost Tyree Nichols to be laid to rest today. A look ahead at the funeral and what's next. Plus, an attempted murder suspect is dead in Oregon, the latest after a standoff with police overnight. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and happy Wednesday, everyone. We'll see a little bit of a warm up today, but temperatures will remain in the teens throughout much of the morning. We'll see 19 degrees at 7 a.m. before temperatures drop back down to 17 degrees at 8 a.m. Right now we're sitting at about 17 degrees, 16 degrees of temperature over in Meridian, 14 degrees in Nampa and 15 degrees in Caldwell right now. Over in CUNA, they're a little bit colder this morning. They're sitting at about 10 degrees right now and 14 degrees the temperature over in Mountain Home. 19 degrees the temperature right now in Ontario and as we move up to the mountains a very chilly start there three degrees right now in Sun Valley and 12 degrees the temperature over in McCall. Now we'll see temperatures in the teens still at 9 a.m. We'll be sitting at around 19 degrees then then we'll jump to 24 degrees around 11 o'clock and we'll break 30 degrees around 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 34 degrees that's going to be at 3 p.m. and that'll stick around till about 5 or 6 o'clock tonight. Now 34 degrees are also going to be the high in Emmett and Nampa and 35 degrees looking like the high in Caldwell. Well, 32 degrees expected to be the high in Mountain Home. 31 degrees going to be the high in Ontario. And then as we move up to the mountains, 22 degrees in Sun Valley, 35 in Idaho City, and 29 degrees going to be the high in McCall today. Now tonight we'll drop back into the teens, 15 degrees expected then. And then we'll jump to 38 degrees tomorrow with mostly sunny skies in Boise. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 631 this Wednesday morning, starting to see some more folks out on the road. But as you can see on your screen in those I-84 10 mile and I-84 Cloverdale shots, the most cars, but traffic moving along smoothly. Other than that, very calm, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And we begin this morning with Boise City Council denying the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association's appeal of the design review approval for the proposed interfaith sanctuary shelter on State Street. The Neighborhood Association says the different conditions given by the City Council to interfaith were not met, but the City Council appearing to disagree. Interfaith's project now allowed to go forward and start the process within a matter of months. While the Veterans Park Neighborhood Association won't be able to make any more appeals there, they are still going forward with a lawsuit. And taking a look now at our coverage at the Capitol, a bill that would implement Governor Brad Little's proposed expansion of the Idaho launch program, making it through House Education Committee in a narrow vote, splitting Republicans, seven of them opposing the bill. The bill's sponsor says it's not a scholarship program, it's a workforce investment program. House Majority Leader Megan Blinksma emphasizes students seeking the most in-demand career will be priority than those who need the most help. The legislation now heads to the full House with a due pass recommendation. Also at the State House, a proposal that would consolidate school bond and levy election dates. Right now, school boards can have four elections a year to pass measures that are needed in local school districts. Those are in March, May, August, and November. This bill would cut it down to two, and they would align with the primary and general elections. The bill's sponsor says it will save both money and increase voter turnout. Right now, counties spend an average of $24,000. The committee sent the bill to print, where it will now get a hearing in the House State Affairs Committee. 
Well, turning to developing news, the funeral for Tyree Nichols will be held today at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis. The Reverend Jay Lawrence will preside over the service and the Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. The family says they hope Nichols' death won't be in vain and calling for local and national police reforms. The Shelby County District Attorney's Office says its investigation is not over and they're looking at all individuals involved the night Nichols was beaten. Well, Vice President Kamala Harris set to attend that funeral later today. She spoke with Nichols' family over the phone just yesterday. Atlanta's former mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, and current senior advisor to the president for public engagement will also be there. Family members of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor are also expected to attend. Well, in Oregon, the search for a suspect in an attempted murder case ended overnight. Benjamin Foster died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound after an hours-long standoff with police in Grants Pass. The search for Foster started on January 24th after officers found a woman who had been bound and severely beaten into unconsciousness. Tyler Meyerly from our Sinclair Sister Station has the latest and what's next. An hour's long standoff finally ending just before 8 p.m. Tuesday night. Grants Pass Police confirming the search for Benjamin Foster is over. One week after officers responded to a woman being bound and beaten in her own home, the suspect returning to the scene. Earlier today, the Grants Pass Police Department received credible information that the suspect, Benjamin, Benjamin Foster, had been seen uh, near the victim's residence um, and that he had been seen entering into that residence. For some time, investigators weren't sure if Foster was actually in the home. But after hours of attempts to contact Foster, negotiators were able to locate him in the crawl space underneath the house. Then finally, officials announcing Benjamin Foster was in custody. But at the time, they removed him from the house on a stretcher in critical condition, according to officials. Foster died at the hospital as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. More details expected during a press conference Wednesday with all agencies involved in the week-long manhunt, finally coming to an end right where it all started. In Grants Pass, I'm Tyler Meyerly. And back here in Idaho, Boise police looking for these men that you see on your screen. Suspects in an armed robbery. It happened just before 1.30 yesterday afternoon on the 3500 block of West Rose Hill. Both are described as white men. One you can see wearing a blue hoodie and gray sweatpants and the other a black hoodie and gray sweatpants. Police say they had on full masks and they got away with some cash. If you live in the Latah, Casha, Rose Hill, and Roosevelt areas, check your security cameras, and if you see any footage of them, call police. Well, looking ahead, the stadium hosting this year's Super Bowl being prepped ahead of the big game. Workers at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, putting up banners and signs for the game. Now on Sunday the 12th, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles competing for bragging rights and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Visit Phoenix says this will be the third Super Bowl played at this venue. Well, just over a week away, we'll be celebrating the Super Bowl. Everyone will have their parties, and hopefully this weekend's temperatures stick around for next weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looking like it's going to be above average, mm -hmm. finally. Yeah, we're finally going to see a little bit of a warm-up here in the Valley. We'll see a gradual warm-up this week as temperatures today are sitting in the mid-30s. Now, we'll see that gradual warm-up throughout this week. We'll jump into the 40s by Friday, and we'll stay dry through Friday as well. We could see some possible showers on Sunday, and Saturday night is when those showers could begin, and we'll see showers throughout the day on Sunday. We're also going to see some stagnant air, at least for the next couple of days. We have an air stagnation advisory for most of southwestern Idaho. That spans into central Idaho as well and also into eastern Oregon. Now, this air stagnation will be in effect and we'll see some inversion happening throughout much of the valleys. But here in the upper Treasure Valley, as well as parts of the western Magic Valley, they may see some more winds over the next couple of days that could stop that inversion from forming. But in parts of the lower Treasure Valley, we're definitely going to see inversion over the next couple of days. Now we're also going to stay dry. We will see those showers move into the region Saturday night and we'll see them continue on throughout the day on Sunday and those showers could stick around on Sunday night. But by Monday morning, we should see just a few isolated showers and that should continue on into Monday and Tuesday. Now as for today, we're going to stay dry and we're going to see partly cloudy skies. We'll see temperatures at 25 degrees at 11 o'clock. We'll jump to 30 degrees at 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 34 degrees. That's going to be at 3 p.m. Now we'll jump four degrees from today to tomorrow 
tomorrow and we'll see a high of 38 degrees tomorrow. Temperatures will just jump one degree up to 39 degrees on Friday and then we'll jump above average throughout the weekend. On Saturday we'll see a high of 45 degrees. That's about four degrees above average and then we'll see temperatures drop two degrees to around 43 degrees on Sunday. We'll see that 43 degree high stick around on Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Very excited for those 40s up on the board mm -hmm. because it's it's really cold out there. It's that yeah, it's real cold out there right yeah. now. And hopefully we'll see those lows jump into at least the 30s on some days. Yeah. So we are going to see definitely a warm up of those overnight lows and we'll see temperatures jump above average. So a little bit milder temperatures coming our way. Hopefully yeah. they stick around next week. Yeah, maybe you won't have to bundle up and then run to your car as fast as you <laughs> can when leaving. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for a look at our traffic conditions. Well, the drive uh, not too crazy. Matter of fact, overall pretty quiet. Uh, the spots away from I-84, 184 volumes are real light so far, but that'll begin to change up, especially next hour. Uh, very quiet overall, 84. There's minimal merge crowding in Meridian coming east. Good. Uh, road closures, including a all-four-direction deal in Nampa. The latest roundabout spot going in. Robinson Road, Airport Road. No getting through over the next four months. All four directions. So no through traffic on Airport Road in Nampa between Happy Valley McDermott and north-south route Robinson closed to through traffic between Victory and Stam Lane. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. All right, folks, it's time for our question of the day. That question is a new poll finds nearly 70% of owners say their pets enjoy doing this. Well, I'm going to steal with one of our viewers guesses and I'm going to say, you know, listening to music. What do you guys think? I like that. Hmm. <laughs> 70%. <sighs> I know it's a hard one. <laughs> All right, let's see what folks have to say at home. Marsha oh. says ripping up the carpet. And that's not only a dog thing, cats will do that too. So yeah, that yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah. All right, Douglas says chewing on a toy or a bone. What pet doesn't like toys? Oh yeah. yeah. Gail says laying in a sunny spot. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I come back as an animal, that's what I'm gonna do the whole time. <laughs> All right, folks. If you think you know the answer, still 15 minutes to get your guesses in on our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll tell you the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, cutting down on the costs as egg prices soar. Some tips if you're thinking about grabbing some chickens. CBS2 Adventure Weather is showing you a look of forecast across the Gem State. Over in Weezer, 29 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 14 degrees overnight and we'll see clear skies. And then tomorrow, mostly sunny skies with a high of 31 degrees over in Weezer. Meanwhile, over in Council, 26 degrees and partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures will drop down to 9 degrees overnight and then tomorrow, 30 degrees and mostly sunny skies in Council. Thank you, Vasily. Well, Tom Brady has announced his retirement for good this time. Brady won a record seven Super Bowls for New England and Tampa. He is the most successful quarterback in NFL history. He posted the announcement on social media in a brief video lasting just under one minute. And today, President Biden has his first White House meeting with the new Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. One of the most pressing items on the agenda is raising the country's debt limit. McCarthy says he wants a reasonable agreement that includes spending cuts. The White House is pushing for more specifics from the California Republican. After the country hit the limit earlier last month, the U.S. Treasury announced it was taking extraordinary measures to avoid default, and that bought some time to give Congress until June to act. And layoffs in the tech sector continue. This time, PayPal says it will cut around 7% of its workforce, which is roughly around 2,000 jobs over the next several weeks. The digital payment company cites the challenging macroeconomic environment for its decision. PayPal is the parent company of payment apps, Venmo and Zoom, among others. Well, as egg prices rise due to inflation and bird flu outbreaks, more people are considering getting chickens to help cut costs. Now, Cassidy Williams is sharing some things you need to keep in mind if you're considering getting yourself a little feathered friend. It seems every trip to the grocery store for Sue Dottie comes with a surprise. 
What will a dozen eggs cost? I paid $4.99 for a dozen eggs, and a week ago, maybe 10 days ago, I spent $6.29 at ShopRite. <laughs> so what about the all-organic option? This is a Buff Arpington um, rooster. <laughs> Joshua Beebe is the owner of Tardiff Poultry Farm in Coventry. He says he's already sold thousands of chickens this year as people look to make their own eggs. And I think people are just trying to get back to local and they think eggs and local chickens is a good way to do it. Beebe says the costs will vary depending on what you're looking for, but it's worth it to invest in supplies that will last a few years. Let's do the math. If you want two dozen eggs a week, you'll need at least four egg laying hens. They cost about $20 each. Then you need a coop. On average, that'll cost around $200. A waterer and feeder, about $50. The upfront cost then is $330. Two dozen eggs at the grocery store will cost you about $10. You'll spend around 50 cents a week in feed, meaning you save $9.50 a week by having your own chickens. Using those numbers, it'll take you about 35 weeks to recoup your investment. Chicks will cost you less, but then you also need to buy heat lamps and other supplies. <coughs> and it's not just the money you need to think about. You want to make sure you're educated. You want to make sure you know um, what you want the bird for, um, what the outcome is. Make the commitment, just like if you're getting a dog, getting any, it's an animal you have to take care of. I'm it's not for everyone, Dottie included. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, tonight could be the night somebody wins $653 million. The cash value worth about $350.5 million. According to Powerball, if the player wins the jackpot, it would then be the eighth largest grand prize won in the Powerball game. Now, you'll recall last Powerball jackpot was back on November 19th when a ticket holder in Kansas won the grand prize worth $92.9 million. Since then, there have been 31 consecutive drawings without a jackpot winner. Well, the last winner came in the Sunflower State. Hopefully they can bring that winning or winning tradition over into the Gem State now. That would be nice to see a winner yeah. here. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to that. The West Side needs a little help. Mm -hmm. It's 31's a lot, guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Vasily joining us with weather. Mm -hmm. So tell us, it's very cold outside, mm -hmm. but the good news, a warming trend heading our way. Yeah, we're going to see temperatures jump into the 30s today after seeing two or three different days with temperatures in the 20s. Now, we do still have that high pressure system off the coast, but it is weakening, and we're going to see that jet stream shift from a northerly flow pulling down that Arctic air down to a coastal flow that is going to pull some warmer air into the gem state. Now this will slowly warm our temperatures up into the 40s by this weekend and will stay above average early next week. Now as for today, we are going to see temperatures in the mid 30s and we're going to see partly cloudy skies for a majority of the day. But by this evening and later on tomorrow morning, we are going to see some clear skies. Should make for a beautiful sunset to, or sunrise tomorrow here in Boise and for much of the gem state, we'll see clear skies. And then on Friday, we will see some more clouds moving into the region. We're expecting mostly cloudy skies on Friday. We'll see temperatures jump up to 38 degrees tomorrow and then 39 degrees looking like the high on Friday. We'll jump to 45 degrees on Saturday and we'll see mostly cloudy skies all weekend. 43 degrees looking like the high on Sunday and Monday and on Sunday we're going to see a rain snow mixture. That precipitation will most likely be rain for most of the valley and then up at higher elevations we may see some snowfall and then on Monday and Tuesday we'll see a high of 43 on Monday and 44 on Tuesday. Meanwhile over in the mountains 30 degrees today. Temperatures will jump up to 35 degrees on Thursday and Friday. 36 degrees looking like the high on Saturday. And then temperatures will drop to 34 degrees on Sunday and we'll see some snow showers on Sunday over in the mountains. Happy to see those overnight lows warming up as mm -hmm. well because it's been cold in, oh, in the yeah, mornings. Especially in the evenings we're seeing some yeah. very frigid temperatures but yeah gradual warming not only of our high temperatures but also our low temperatures and here in the valley we may see lows on a couple of days jump into the 30s and over in the mountains we may see some lows jump into the 20s. That is some good news. Mm -hmm. Thank you Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how our traffic conditions are looking. We're still uh, not doing bad. No major complications or uh, trouble spots. 84, of course, there's a little more volume that's been coming east on the freeway. But uh, slow down some meridian have been fairly minimal so far. Next hour, things begin to really busy up. Uh, not bad through Nampa. 184 looks great. Things quiet. Uh, driving conditions, of course, good, too. 
from the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day this Wednesday morning, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more teen traffic updates. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News, monkeys are back at the Dallas Zoo after disappearing earlier this week. Why the latest escape is just part of a troubling trend. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 654. Welcome back. Two missing monkeys are back at the Dallas Zoo this morning. They disappeared earlier this week. Janet Shamalian explains this follows a mysterious and troubling incident at the Dallas Zoo. Tonight, two missing monkeys have been returned to the Dallas Zoo. Zoo officials in a now deleted tweet saying they were thrilled and the pair is being evaluated. Police acting on a tip were led to an abandoned home about a half hour south of the zoo. They reportedly found the monkeys in a closet. Earlier in the day, Dallas police said they were looking for this man in connection with the disappearance of the monkeys. The photo and this video of the same man wandering the zoo grounds were taken Sunday before the Emperor Tamarin monkeys were reported missing Monday. There are several markets for this type of monkey. Some is just for people who want to keep them as pets, and the other one is people who want to breed them. It's the fourth bizarre incident at the zoo in the last month, and it comes after additional cameras and security were put in place. Earlier this month, a clouded leopard escaped. The fencing around its habitat had been cut. The animal was found nearby the same day. The zoo's enclosure of the Langer monkeys was also discovered cut, but none escaped. On January 21st, an endangered lappet-faced vulture was found dead. The bird reportedly had an unusual injury. A cause of death is pending. Janet Shamley and CBS News, Houston. Happy to know they're home safe. All right, it's time for our question of the day, folks. That question in a new poll. We find that nearly 70% of owners say their pets enjoy doing this. Well, so I'm going to stick with my guess from the first hour, or sorry, for the second hour that I got from a viewer, and it was listening to music, which I feel like yeah. definitely multiple different animals, not only dogs, will do. Because, like, mm. I've seen a few videos of oh, those yeah. dogs with, like, they're nodding their head along <laughs> the beat. It's pretty cute. What do, you, what do you guys think? It's adorable. All right, what are you thinking, Ash? I think I'm going to stay with sleep in the bed. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Maybe I enjoy that more than my dog does, <laughs> but you never know. There could be cats and parrots and ferrets. And you never know. All kinds of animals that sleep in the bed with their owners. All right, I'm going to take one from one of our guesses, um, one of our viewers' guesses, laying in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Love that one. Definitely, I know yeah. my dog loves to do that. All right, yeah. and the answer, folks, is... Well, uh, we were all just wrong. It was Dang watching it. TV. Oh, okay. I mean, my dog, my dog back home in Seattle yeah. definitely does that. She'll mm -hmm. sit there and watch the, the the dog runs across the street or a horse. Yes. She freaks out. Yeah, oh. Lola will kind of like turn her head with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's animal TV out there, folks. All right. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.